Good morning and welcome to Pell City First United Methodist Church and Wide Open Worship. Um, I have been saying that for almost six years, and, um, but it's never been quite like this. Because normally when we have wide open, the lights are dimmer uh, and there are seats out and there are people sitting all over the place. When you say something funny, Kyle will do a rim shot uh, or Dan will fall out laughing. Uh, and you can see the youth over here hoping that they're not talking to each other while you're talking to them. But today, it's just us. Um, and honestly, this is not the way that I had hoped that this would happen. We're not doing this because we want to do it. We're doing it because we have to do it. Uh, in fact, I'm probably the one that has kept us at this church from doing this for years. And so let me just say at the very beginning... Uh, a quick apology to my associate pastors of past and present, uh, Arthur, Angela, Brandon, and Belinda, who have each in their own way lovingly tried to help me to see that uh, the future of the church needed something like this, where we stream worship. Well, we're doing it. I'm not doing it grudgingly, though. I'm doing it because we need it. Because these are interesting and difficult times. I'm doing it because uh, right now it makes the most sense for us to not be in physical proximity with each other. And yet, even when we're experiencing that space, we know how important it is for us to not experience isolation. We're doing it because we know that as Christians, as the church, as God's body, that we are called to be in community with one another we know that we're better together. We're stronger together. We can do more with one another than we can by ourselves. And so we're hoping that uh, this will encourage, uh, that this will help you to get through these difficult times. So let me just say from the very beginning, this will probably not be the best um, streaming worship that you will. In fact, we're not even streaming. We're recording and we're showing it a little bit later because we don't know what we're doing. We don't know how to do it. We're probably gonna make mistakes, but we're gonna get better at it. We're gonna try. As long as we're having to do this, as long as we need to do this, we're gonna get better. And we're gonna do better music. We're gonna have better sermons. And I promise that I'm not gonna the only face that you're gonna to see. Today I will be, so I apologize. In fact, we're gonna get so good at this that you're gonna find yourself thinking you know what, maybe I don't need to come to church anymore. But you're never going to get quite to that point because you're going to know that you do. That there's something valuable about us coming together. That there's something different about us coming together. That when we see one another, that when we live our lives with one another and for one another, that we are better people because of it. And so welcome to Wide Open Worship. It is so good to be with you today. Now we're in the season of Lent, which is a 40 day journey as we walk with Jesus toward the cross of his crucifixion in anticipated uh, celebration of his resurrection. We began Lent uh, this year in this church um, with uh, ashes as many churches do. We took the sign of the cross on our forehead of the palm branches that had been waved the previous Palm Sunday and those ashes burned down, crushed, mixed with a little oil, made the sign of the cross on our forehead. But that wasn't the only ash that we used that day. We took some more ash. See, the Sunday before Ash Wednesday in worship, we were asked to take a piece of paper and write down a regret, pain, hurt, something that we'd really like to let go of. And so we did. We took them and we wrote them down on pieces of paper and we took those papers and we burned them. We took the ashes, mixed it with this substance called gesso, which is the stuff that you put on a canvas before you paint, prepares it. And then after somebody had received the sign of the cross, they came up and they took a brush and they put a swipe on the canvases, preparing the canvas of our own soul with the ashes of our own regrets. This is who we are. 
And this is kind of the season that we're in. And so uh, as we enter into this time of worship, I want to invite you to pray with me. It's a prayer uh, that was uh, first prayed by William Sloan Coffin, who is the pastor at Riverside Church in New York City. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. O God, whose mercy is ever faithful and ever sure, who art our refuge and our strength in time of trouble, visit us, we beseech thee, for we are a people in trouble. We need a hope that is made wise by experience and is undaunted by disappointment. We need an anxiety about the future that shows us new ways to look at new things, but does not unnerve us. As a people, we need to remember that our influence was greatest when our power was weakest. Most of all, we need to turn to thee, O God, and our crucified Lord, for only his humility and his strength can heal and free us. O God, be thou our sole strength in time of trouble. In the midst of anxiety, grant us the grace to count our blessings, the simple and obvious ones, health, food, sleep, one another, a spring that is bursting out all over, a nation which, despite all, has so much to offer so many. And grant us to count our more complicated blessings, our failures, which teach us so much more than success, our lack of money, which points to the only true renewable resources, the resources of our spirit, our lack of humility, yea, even the knowledge of death, for until we learn that life is limitation, we are surely as formless and as shallow as a stream without its banks. Amen. So now each Sunday during this season of Lent, we've been kind of walking with Jesus, as I said, through, um, toward his cross. Actually, we've been walking each day. Uh, each Sunday is a day. So this is the third day in the journey with Jesus. And our theme for today is called Teaching, Risking Challenge. And so the picture that we focus on, because every week we've been focusing on a piece of artwork, is called The Tribute Money by James Jock Joseph Tussaud. It depicts um, a scripture passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, starting in verse 15. I'm going to start reading in verse 17. And so I'm going to do something that we can't do normally in wide open worship. I'm going to ask you to hit pause, go grab the Bible off your bedside table, and then come back and uh, join with me in reading Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. The accusers came to him and they said, Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, Thanks be to God. So normally, uh, at this point in the worship service, um, we would take a closer look at this picture. We'd actually hear of a story from somebody in that, painter, in that painting and their perspective of what that day was like. But like I said, we're in different times. We're feeling like we're a little bit shut down. We are closing ourselves off. We called off worship. We have called off all of our activities for a season. And we don't even know when that season ends until it's right for us to come back. It's a difficult time. And so there may have been accusers coming to Jesus and asking him questions about what was going on with him, questioning his authority, questioning the authority of resurrection, questioning uh, whether or not you should give taxes, or questioning even what is the greatest commandment. Some of them seemed a little bit legit. Most of them were just trying to trip him up, catch him in a lie, or catch him in a falsehood, so that they could bring about charges, plotting his death. But I've been thinking lately about different questions. 
Maybe you have too. And the questions uh, might sound a little bit different. Um, questions like, why is this happening? What is it all about? What are we going to do about it? And is there hope? I want you to know that these are the same kind of questions that people were asking in Jesus' day. Now, it wasn't the scribes and the authorities that were asking those questions, but it was the ones who had been trodden down, put out by the power of Rome. It was the ones who had been looked over and looked past. It was the ones who had been forgotten, folks like us. They were asking those same kinds of questions, some of the same questions that we're asking today, wondering, how is this all going to turn out? What's it going to look like for us? What am I going to do with my kids? And where can I get toilet paper? We're asking lots of different questions for ourselves. Some of them seem a little bit trivial. Some of us are, at, are wondering if this is a great conspiracy, if this, is a, is it, if this has any credence at all. And some of us honestly are worried if we should ever leave the house again. We got a lot of different things that are rolling around in our heads. I want to encourage you to ask them, to ask Jesus. You can even ask us while you're listening to this today. Lift up your prayers, your concerns, your requests to God. No question is too big, not for me to answer, but no question is too big for God to entertain. And he welcomes them, I promise. We need that freedom. We need that opportunity to come before God and to share our deepest thoughts and concerns because we know that we're feeling them. But I want to encourage you as well. The answer that Jesus gave to these ones who questioned him, should we give taxes to Caesar? The answer that he gave to them is this. Give to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, but give to God that which belongs to God. I want you to hear this loud and clear. Nothing really belongs to Caesar, and everything really belongs to God. You are God's. Your life, your breath, your family, your household, your future, and your past. We belong to God. And we are just the type of people for whom God came into this world. I like to say, when all hope was lost, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ came into the world for us. And why did he come? To seek and to save that which was lost. Why did he come? To bring those who were thought to be far away and bring them closer to God. Why did he come? To proclaim that the year of the Lord's favor was at hand and that good news was happening all around us. That may not feel like good news, but there's still plenty of good news to be had. So I want to encourage you, not just in your questioning, but I want to encourage you to allow God to use this time to grow you and us deeper in our own faith. And you can do that in many ways. You can take time to write stuff down. You can do it in long form journaling. You can write down poems or words or sentences or questions. You can let your prayer take this form and Lift those things up to God. Maybe you're not one that's literary. Maybe you're not a good writer. For you, you might just need to spend a little bit more time outside. You can breathe in that air all day long. And get in the midst of God's creation and hear God breathing to you again. The breath of life. It could be that in this time when we're going through kind of a self-isolation that you are, that God is going to use you to not be isolated and not allow others to be isolated. To reacquaint yourself with maybe some old forms. Write a letter, send a note, make a phone call. Even if it's an analog dial-up, 
phone. It's okay to reach out to somebody, especially one of those who is the most vulnerable to this virus. Reach out to them and say, how you doing? What can I, how can I help? What do you need? Or call your school principal and ask them, how are things going? Are there any kids that need anything? How can I be a part? Or you know what? While we're all hoarding all of the, sanit the sanitary wipes and the disinfectant and toilet paper, maybe our job is to take a little bit of what we have and find somebody who needs it. You never know. God can use us in many different ways. God can give us space for our questioning. But God also gives us opportunity to grow even through the most difficult of times. Now, I shared with my congregation on Friday in a congregational email when, honestly, I felt like we would still be worshiping in person today. A breath prayer that I had been praying and encouraged you all to form a breath prayer of your own. But Friday night, when I was at the grocery store, my breath prayer changed. I shared this in an email yesterday. And that breath prayer changed because as I was walking around the grocery store, seeing buggies piled high with everything that you can imagine, that sense of panic seemed to roll over me and over us. And I was reminded of that scene when Jesus' disciples, after his crucifixion, had holed up in the upper room, locked the door for fear that they would be next. Jesus somehow appeared in that room. We still don't know how he did it. And he came in, and the word he spoke to them is, Peace be with you. And then he did something that, if he did it today, we'd probably get mad at him. He breathed on them. And when he did, he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then again said, Peace be to you. You know, in that moment, I found myself praying something different. Lord Jesus, send forth your Holy Spirit. Breathe on us that we may be renewed and remade even in these most difficult of times. May it be so. Amen.